What's happening, guys? It's TJ, LSU Dad. Welcome to another episode of That Is SEC News to Me. Coming to you, sort of in midweek. A lot is still going on. A lot is going on. So let's get right down into it. First up, first up, Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee. <laughs> Take me to another place. Take me to another land. <laughs> Let me forget all that hurts me. Let me understand your plan. Tennessee. Wow. Originally, I was going to include Tennessee in my video that came out on Sunday, right? But it was still happening. <laughs> It was unfolding, right? As soon as I shot a video, then I had to take it down again because this Tennessee story, guys, I'm serious. I don't know, I don't know if you're following this thing, but it is crazy. Uh, Tennessee attempted to hire a coach, right? Defensive coordinator from Ohio. Buck lies. <laughs> Mistake number one, right? Attempted to hire this cat. It didn't go well. Not at all. It was a full-out revolt, right? Students took to that big rock they got, you know, painted a sign. I didn't know anything about this. So I was sort of, you know, this thing sort of educated me because I didn't know this Skiro guy was connected to the, the Jerry Sandusky thing at Tennessee. But apparently he was. Even Tennessee state legislators got involved and was like, oh, 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 no, oh, no, 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 you know. This is a pooty tang. That's a nano on the tippy tie. They wasn't having no part of it. And understandably so, because he is accused of knowing uh, that Jerry Sandusky was molesting kids for all those years and didn't say anything. And the last thing Tennessee need, they don't need another scandal. They don't need Tennessee need about two or three years of peace and quiet. Right. And this guy was rejected off top because he he's coming in with scandal. That cloud is just going to follow him. Hey, hey, you know, he decided he made the decision that he was going to walk past what Jerry Sandusky was doing and ignore it. You know, so good move, Tennessee. Hey, guys, I applaud you. I applaud you for that. That wasn't a good choice. And that's why I didn't want to speak about it. And so I knew more, you know, and so I called some people and asked them, hey, tell me from, from the Tennessee fan perspective, what is going on up there? And yeah, they were still hoping and holding out to see if they would get Gruden. I, I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was a chance of that happening. I just couldn't see this guy leaving this wonderful situation at Monday Night Football, you know, where the little bus rolls around and you get to go to all of these games and just, I just couldn't see that to trade that in for a couch and recruiting and begging five stars to come to your program. I, I just couldn't see Gruden doing that. That doesn't mean that he can't. I can't see it. That's hard. That's work. You know, that's work. Gruden is in a point right now where he don't really have to work. He just show up and talk sort of like I do. <laughs> right. But uh, the search goes on. Uh, they're not happy with this interim guy. In my perspective, I think the interim guy, they should just clean house. Listen to me, Tennessee. Go get some pine saw. Right. And broom, dustpan. Some old school Ajax, like back in the day in the 70s, turn on Soul Train and just clean a house. That's why my mama used to do it back in the day. That's how I knew we knew it was time to start cleaning up because you smelled the pine soil and then you heard Soul Train, people all over the world. And you know, you pretty much knew we're going to be cleaning till about lunchtime. <laughs> And that's what Tennessee, that's what you should do, guys. Next up on SEC News to Me. Right. When I discovered this right here, it was about two o'clock in the morning. It's about two in the morning. Right. And the first thought that entered my mind is, you know what? I'm going to take this and use this uh, as a recruiting mechanism because y'all know me. I don't like Alabama. Right. Then I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go after the dude 
who went after Jalen Hurts. And I got to tell you this story, right? Because at around 3 o'clock in the morning, this happened on Twitter. I'm telling you, if you guys not following me on Twitter, that's where everything goes down at. Around 3 o'clock in the morning, because I'm up all night. I watch film like I have a football team. <laughs> I don't have a team in the first, right? I'm up all night watching watching high school kids' videos and everything, you know? And with this Jalen Hurts thing disturbed me tremendously, tremendously, right? And there's a, there's a problem here because these fans feel to believe that you can attack this young man like this because you lost the football game. Schools lose football games. You're not entitled to a national championship every year, right? And Jalen Hurts lost one regular season game in two years. I said it on Twitter. I said, if he was at LSU and we lost one regular season game in two years, we would name a Mardi Gras parade after him. He'll roll on Mardi Gras morning. The crew of Jalen will roll on Mardi Gras morning right before Rex and Zulu. He would be celebrated. We would have billboards. Okay? We're naming children after him. If we would have, if the kid would have had the same record, right? And no, it's not all fans. It's not all fans. But yesterday I did challenge the Alabama fan base because this is not the first time that a player uh, has fallen out of grace. An African-American player has fallen out of grace with Alabama fans. And the first thing they want to result to is calling him all kind of racial insults. It happened with Hootie Jones and Cam Robinson. And I crossed the, the rival line at that time to come to the defense of Hootie Brown and of Hootie Jones and Cam Robinson and say, you guys are not going to call them these names. I went on AL.com and it did not stop until I posted on AL.com. I'm screenshotting every one of these comments to use in recruiting. It was only then that someone, an administrator, went through that thread and began to delete those attacks. This got to stop. This has to stop. Okay. And I'm charging the Alabama fan base to get more aggressive and going after these people. All right. Here's why. When I begin to pursue this thing against this man, right, for attacking Jalen Hurts. Right. We first were able to get his Twitter account shut down. Then we went after Facebook. Then we went after LinkedIn. And when I say we, I mean, the first people to show up was Georgia fans because they were equally outraged. Right. Ole Miss fans came. So before you knew it, people from Arkansas joined in. So you have several schools from the SEC all working, expressing their outrage. Some even called this job, okay? So when you hear reports that this guy account has been taken down, that didn't mysteriously happen. That was the SEC family who came together to say, we're not going to tolerate this. There's no place in college football for this. Jalen Moms should not have to go in a message board and express her, her heartbreak as it relates to how these fans are treating her son. Okay? And... Alabama fans, the ones who consider yourself the good ones, right? You got, you have to get more active involved in this because we were able to do that. But by the time I finished my egg sandwich that morning, this guy accounts were shut down. Alabama fan base could have gotten more involved. Okay. So what I find that's happening is like, it's like the suicide bomber, right? Who's putting together the bomb in his house. Everybody in the house know he's putting together the bomb, right? Then he goes out there and, 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 and blows up a whole bunch of stuff. And the family is like, well, we didn't know anything about it. We didn't know anything about it. And others say, well, TJ, that's an isolated incident. It's not isolated. It's not isolated, okay? Because if it happens one time, that's one time too many. Then I had someone else try to say, well, this is another Alabama fan. Well, when we beat y'all 21 nothing in the Superdome, they were calling Jefferson all kind of N-words. Where were you then? I said, I wasn't on Twitter. But where were you? If you witnessed it and you saw it, 
I don't care if you are at Alabama. You get involved in it. You step up and say, we're not going to tolerate it. There's no place for this. At Arkansas, it's not, and it's not just black and it's not just black where they crossed the line. At Arkansas, Brandon Allen Truck was set on fire. Okay, when it was announced he was going to, he's going to be the starter. They set his truck on fire. All right, I've even had people in the comments in these YouTubes think go too far because this Wi-Fi courage that they have, it, it empowers them. It gives them, you know, they can hide behind this keyboard. And type all kind of nonsense that they would not say to my face if they saw me in person. So we obviously have this troll thing going on. It's gotten out of control. But to attack this young man like this, you're not a fan of college football at all. You are a racist maggot. And, and anytime I encounter it, we're going to squash you. Just like we did this guy. I promise you. Guys, that's it. That's all I got. That's it. That's I want to keep this segment short. <laughs> Wanted to keep it really, really short. But I'm going to come back to you before this week is out. I promise you. Um, I'm going to see Bama Pelican. <laughs> that's right. I got to see him. So I'm going to see Bama Pelican. And I'm going to post that video. I got some choice words for him. So stay tuned. But I'll see you guys on the next one. It's your boy down in New Orleans. I work for food, all right? TJ, LSU Dad. Hi, guys. It's TJ, LSU Dad. If you have enjoyed this video, then click the subscribe button to get notifications the next time I publish a new one. And follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Go, SEC. Go, LSU Tigers. <laughs>